this. We'll do this. Okay. All right. So um, uh, today we're going to start off with looking at. I uh, hope everybody had a good Easter. Hope everybody had, had a fun Easter, relaxing Easter. Uh, yes or no? Kind of yes, half and half. Let's say about 50% of people had a good Easter on average. Well, um, I hope you guys have a better week then. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes, I think uh, we're, we're starting to head the, to the final stretch here. So, um, so let's pick up where we were last week, which was um, going through our posters. And now that uh, everybody submitted a poster, some people submitted it late, but still people submitted their posters last week. Um, so we want to uh, make, make sure they're kick butt before they get graded. So we're going to go through and you're going to look at your fellow students' posters and see what's the what. So uh, everybody wake up. Everybody has to wake up now. Everybody has to wake up, pay attention. I know early morning. But... Um, Everybody have a look up here, and we're going to go through a couple of these posters. Actually, I guess we'll go through probably through all of them. I'll give you some of my initial feedbacks leading a discussion, and then we'll break, and you guys will, will do more um, focused feedback. Cool? All right, great. Uh, let's do it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see if we make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's... Um, let me hide this first. Okay. Um, so let's first look at the overall poster. This is about the size that you're seeing on the screen in front of me. This is about the size that it would be. Maybe, maybe, well, maybe a little bit. Sometime between there and there is about the right size in terms of what it would look like actually printed on an actual wall. So, um, uh, We'll go a little bit longer through this one just because it's the first one and, and, and uh, the next ones will go through a bit quicker. But let's have a look at this. What do you guys think overall of this? Now look in the details, just the overall visual rhetoric. So again, the goal here is to communicate technical information um, uh, well, right? And, and succinctly and efficiently and, and ideally elegantly. So this gets hard, right? Because we're, we're used to sort of pumping out a report um, that's just for me to see or some other technical expert, and that's cool. The poster format is also one that should be visually engaging, should be, should be interested in pulling someone into a conversation if possible. Not every single poster is designed that way, but for scientific posters, technical posters, posters about disasters and conservation issues and the like, um, should be... Um, uh, uh, Elegant, if at all possible. Sometimes that's hard, but that's our goal. Okay, so looking at this, again, not looking at the details because we're sort of zoomed out here. Uh, what do you guys think overall? Does this look like an inviting poster? Is this like an interesting poster? Was it, would this make you want to um, walk up closer and, and, and read it in depth? And again, we're not attacking anybody with our comments, right? These are, these are just uh, to make everything better. Everybody's poster, everybody's essay, everybody's scientific paper, whatever, can always be better, right? So by providing feedback, we're not saying you suck or you're lame. We're just trying to say, hey, let's get better. And if we're too nice, right? Because <laughs> sometimes we try to be too, too polite when we start these exercises, these group-based exercises. Sometimes we're like, oh yeah, no, it looks good to me. That doesn't help the person, right? That doesn't help the team in this case, right? You want people to be brutally honest. You want people to throw out all their criticisms, right? You as the author, when we're done with this process, you're going to take those. And maybe one person says, oh, it's too dark. And the other person says, oh, it's too light. Then you have to make a judgment call, right? But, but in providing this feedback, we're not, we're not being harsh. We're trying to be helpful, right? We're trying to give all this, these ideas that folks can, can take and then um, go through. Cool? Okay. So that said, what do you guys think about this from a sort of initial gross, gross perspective? Okay, so it looks it looks dense, right? Uh, uh, Text-wise, looks dense. Okay, what else? What other? Yeah, 
Oh, okay, good. So the, so the picture makes you say, like, wow, looks like a bunch of messed up stuff. What's going on there? Okay, okay, good, cool. Any other initial thoughts? No, okay. So I would say um, uh, one thing to remember about, um, vi now, now we've so far just focused on, um, for our case studies, we're just focused on writing text-based um, entries, right? Um, and then we've done uh, graphs, right? And we've made visual interpretations of data, right? Here, we're, we're, this is the first time we're really blending the two in our class, at least, right? So we have both that text-based stuff and those pictures, but the deal is we have limited real estate, right? We only have so much square feet or square inches or square meters or whatever it is of space. So therefore, space becomes premium. So therefore, the choices that we make um, imply something about importance. Right. So if we have a, a, a picture that takes up, you know, half of the half of the space or a graph that takes up half of the space or anything that takes up half the space, we're implicitly saying this is at least half your attention, at least half your time looking at this poster should be spent on this. Right. So while it's not an exactly one to one correlation, generally speaking, the amount of real estate on the poster that we devote to whatever the thing is, is some measure of its importance, right? So in this case, we're saying this picture of, these, of this destruction is about as important as this uh, location map, as is about as important as this other uh, picture of destruction, as is about as important as these, these other elements of our, of our uh, uh, required reporting. Does that make sense? Yay, nay. Yeah, okay, cool. So I, I would say that um, uh, I do like, I like the fact that, uh, and again, these are just quick, quick comments, but the first comment would be, I like the fact that we have some great visuals in here to illustrate the, the right? So this massively crushed up place, these massively crushed up buildings, that implies to me this is a serious, event, right? This, was, this wasn't a, a minor disaster. This was like a big, a big thing to those people in that place, right? So that's cool. But I would say, um, uh, do we really need, do we really need, you know, so if this is one third, one third, one third, do we really need uh, almost one third of it being just those pictures, right? Maybe we could get by with one of those pictures and maybe uh, a, a table of statistics or something of that nature or a figure illustrating something or, or multiple pictures of, of different components of the destruction or something of that nature. So that's my first, first comment. Next, let's zoom in. Oh, right. Also remember, just like everything else that we're doing, when we, when we, uh, you guys are, always more than well not more than welcome you're encouraged to you know find data sources outside us maybe right outside of our readings right finding stuff on newspaper articles you know government disaster websites that kind of stuff that's great but remember to cite them so in the case unless you guys uh unless it was 100 percent your idea you generated the 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 information so in this case I don't believe the authors took this photo. I don't believe the authors took this photo. So we should, and the same with the map. So we should um, reference this, right? So again, just author year is good enough here. And then we have our literature cited here. So, um, so make sure that, that everything is getting referenced, not just the, the factoid or the, the quantitative value, but also any audio, uh, audio visual material stuff, multimedia stuff, yeah. So uh yeah so great question so it's a bit of your choice right you need to reference it but you can choose to do that in the most stylistically helpful manner you could put just below this say in white text you could put the author in here that's cool or one thing you could do is um you could actually in this case 
actually in all these cases, probably, you could insert a text box right here. And because the, the background is black, you could insert a text box, make the text black, and put the, the author and year of the, of the uh, source right over that. So it looks sort of cut out. You could do that. You could also insert a text box and just have, for example, a black background, you know, do a fill in that text box, have that be black, and then have in, say, white lettering the, the author and year that way. So it doesn't matter. So this is a short answer. It doesn't matter. You guys can do it inside the photo, on the photo, or map, or whatever, just outside. Um, you, could, you could, I suppose, turn it 90 degrees and have it be on the side. And so it's whatever works out stylistically, but you do need to cite it somewhere on that. Good. Other questions or other observations so far? Oh, you definitely absolutely have to have it in the references, but, but you have to have it here as well. Oh, okay. Right. So, so think of it just like saying um, uh, 345 people died. Right. And there's no reference to that. And I said, and I'd say, hey, how come there's no reference to this? Like, oh, it's in the references, but I don't know. Right. We have all these different references. I don't know. I don't know which one that came from. So just like we want to put the reference in the in-text citation right next to the statement or the comment or the idea. Same thing with the, with the audio visual stuff. We want to insert that reference point right next to that uh, that that element uh, figure table legend, whatever it is. Cool. Other questions so far? Are there, are there other feedback so far? Okay, good. So another one I want to uh, talk about is um, uh, is um, uh, yeah. So you guys can choose to do, and I, I think some other posts do it. This one doesn't. So you guys can choose to do um, uh, you know paragraph based text. That's okay. You can also choose to do bullet points, and that's cool. Either one is cool, or a mix of them is cool. It's your, it's your guys' choice. Realize that when you do bulleted uh, uh, text, you don't have to do full, complete sentences. You can, but you don't have to. You can use sentence fragments, for example, in this case. right? Normally, for our regular writing, right, we don't want to use sentence fragments and that kind of stuff. But here, since the idea is a visual communication, we can, how can we, how can we uh, tighten that up? And so um, maybe we'll go through that an example on another, on another poster. But, um, but all I'd say is we can, we can make this uh, look better and read e more, more, uh, more easily read. So see this right here, you guys, how it goes like, uh, there's a line, return, there's a line, return, then there's a line, that's all one bullet. But then there's a line and then a line and then a line and just sort of you know skimming through this it's not if i didn't have these four bullets here it wouldn't be clear to me that those are a distinct idea or a separate argument or a separate piece of evidence right so what you can do is and this is a this is a pdf so i can't show you but i'll show you um when i get to one that is uh has a as a pdf but but anyway um what you can do is is uh so this this element of text, this bullet, how PowerPoint treats that is, is as a paragraph. And so when you hit return, you know, it stops entering this line and it goes over here, right? And the default, if you don't do anything, the default is gonna be a line space is a line space is a line space. However, we have the paragraph formatting option wherein we can go in and say, hey, after each paragraph, give me a little bit extra spacing, right? And that's not saying entering a whole nother line, or you know, it's not like, not like saying skip a line or anything that dramatic. Uh, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a visual break between this idea and the next idea and the next idea. And it turns out that makes it a lot more readable for, for people that are, that are going through this. Cool? Okay, so, so, so that's that. And then the other one is, uh, our next one is, so we have, uh, large text here, bolded text here, small text here. Everybody with me? And so uh, we also have text or uh, title here, and then right into bullet points. Here we have title text, right into bullet points. Here we have title text, space, 
into bullet points, right? So uh, it's not as if there's one way that you have to do it, but we should be consistent. However, our group or our, our project chooses to do it, we should be consistent throughout. Um, um, bup, 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 yeah, and so again, remember we said uh, we should have a minimum size. I believe it's 32 uh, points, right? So it's it's readable, with the exception of the references. The references, it's okay to be smaller than that. Uh, and if you guys were to ever have acknowledgments, it's okay to have your acknowledgments acknowledgments a smaller font. But everything else should shouldn't be any smaller than 32 points. So it's so it's easily readable, right? Remember. The goal for this is to read, as we walked outside last time, to read from you know five to ten feet away easily, and and the the um, uh, way to test that is if you have a PowerPoint, say play slide and have the slide image such that it's 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 full view, right? So we have the full width of the slide there, and then take your arm, touch your the tip and, and straighten your arm. And touch your fingertips to your computer screen, so that you're so that you're that far away from the screen, and you should be able to sit there and easily read everything. That that's a test. Is it is it big enough? Right. That's that's our a rough rule of thumb. Cool. Um, okay. Those are my initial comments on this one. Do you guys have any other general comments on on this poster? One more. I'll just say is uh, is this is cool. Uh, uh, this is cool, right? We got, you guys talked about it seemed dense with, with text. Um, really, really dense with text, 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 pictures, 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 pictures. And then we have this negative space here, right? Negative space here. So uh, we, we can do a better job on that, right? On, on sort of balancing this stuff. So in other words, we maybe could uh, squeeze this text onto one line and get a little more space again. And then we can spread out that text we can spread out the, um, the visuals. And so we have even more space to work with. Cool, all right. Number next. Okay, what do you guys think about this one? What, what, what are your first comments on the overall just gross visual layout of the poster? Oh, not consistent. Okay, cool. So, so what we're talking about is the uh, what's the so-called alignment of the text, right? So, so this stuff here is what's called left justified, which which is what most of our papers, most of our like you know like word document kind of typical writing stuff is. So we start typing here, and then when we get we can't quite fit a word on it, we just boop, we just jump to the other next line, right? Um, uh, so so that's left aligned. Uh, this one is center justified, or, or that's called justified. So this one, if we look, and so the, the left side is lined up just like this paragraph is, but so is the right side, right? And so generally speaking, you don't want to do justified. So the default is just don't ever do justified um, in a visual setting like this. It looks cool because it looks like from the you know, looking from far away, it's like, oh, this is nice and even edge here. And this is a nice, nice and even edge here. But it turns out, as you can see here, this is regular word, here, let's go like this. This is regular word spacing, Mitch to develop a preparation plan, yeah. But this is um, it, the spaced out, right? And it's, and it's, it's optimized so that it really does make this even on the right, even on the left thing. But you get some weird things. So you, like this the, see how this the is kind of floating out in, in space and this of is kind of floating out in space. Can you read it? Of course you can read it. But it turns out it takes us, um, when we do all the, the perception studies, it takes people longer to read this type of text than, than this type of text. So uh, my suggestion is to, um, left aligned stuff. And then the third one here we have, this is the, this is the trifecta of alignment. I love it. So who, who this, this was, this was, uh, this was hurricanes, hurricane folks. You guys are really, uh, yeah, it was cool. Thanks for all the examples. That was good. That was good. Uh, but then this one, th this bottom one here with this paragraph right here is a center aligned. So it has the same spacing, 
as this left uh, uh, alignment, but it, uh, but after essentially the computer, after it calculates this, then it makes everything be um, equal distant from the middle. And so we get this, you know, we get this kind of boom, kind of hourglass and sort of cut in, cut out um, uh, type of paragraph. So again, um, not the end of the world, but, but better to do left align. Um, and again, all these things, there could be an argument for you doing this. Maybe, maybe this made some cool pattern and you had a map over here that matched the pattern. So maybe you'd want to try that. But generally speaking, start off with left align with all your stuff. Okay, cool. Um, all right, what else? What do you guys think in terms of overall visual layout of this? Like it, don't like it? What do you guys think? Damn it, what do you think? Okay. Okay. So, so, so this, this, uh, assuming this was right, I don't, I don't know if this is the best map, but assuming this is map, uh, even if we were, were to use it, it does seem a little bit weird that we have this gap here, right? So, just like we talked about last time, the negative space uh, or the space where we don't have objects or text or whatever, right? The, um, that's, that's not the first, that's not the most important thing, right? Last week you're putting together your first drafts. So you want to get the facts. Let's get the, the quantities up in there. But now, now that we've got a first draft, let's see how things roll, right? And so in that context, yeah, we could put some other data here. We could put another figure here or another map or something. It just seems kind of wasted, right? Plus there's also all this crap right here, right? All this negative space in the image that, is that really all that important, right? Do we really, is, is it? So, so we can do cropping and, and that stuff as well, right? We can select the, maybe we, maybe this was the right map we wanted to use and it was the correct one, but we can click it and then we can crop that, that excess um, negative space off, uh, for example. Okay, what else? What else do you guys think? Yay or nay? Yeah. Okay. So right. And so in general, things are are not really aligned as good as as great as they could be. We have some gaps up here, right? So it looks like uh, we could take this and maybe make it, you know, the bottom sort of align with the bottom down here, right? And then we'd have enough space to put in a table of wind speed or deaths or economic impact or whatever it is, right? So we have looks like there's, there's we in other words we have some more space we could work with here with just a little teeny bit of tweaking. And uh, that can either then in turn allow us to put more text in or maybe make our existing text a little bit bigger so that much easier to read, right? So when I say things are 32 point, that's the minimum. You, you could go bigger. Um, so cool. Other, other general layout issues? Okay. Let's look at, uh, let's look at one of our... Um, Okay, so these guys uh, did the regular text-based stuff as opposed to bullets, which, which is fine. Um, um, uh, Hurricane Mitch from the disaster are estimated to be roughly $6 billion. So, right, so if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do the text, if you're gonna do the, um, uh, do the paragraph form, which again is fine, you do need to have, whereas with bullets, you can have sentence fragments and little chunks and use use shortcuts and things like that. Instead of writing F-I-R-S-T, you can write one S-T. Instead of writing A-N-D, you can put an ampersand, you can do all that kind of stuff. But when you're doing the paragraphs, we do need to have full sentences. So this first one, Hurricane Mitch, comma, from the disaster are estimated to be roughly $6 billion. Don't know what that means, right? That, that, that's a blah, blah sentence. That's a crap sentence, right? So, so if we're gonna go the paragraph, you do need to tighten up your language and make sure that everything is grammatically correct. Um, also, right, just like in here, everything needs to be referenced. Just like we talked about last time with the, the last poster with the, um, uh, with, with the, the visual credits, right? We also got to say, uh, you know, who says it's $6 billion? So you calculated $6 billion? No, 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 I read it somewhere. Oh, you read it somewhere. Show me the source where you read it from, right? Again, totally nothing wrong with citing sources. You guys should be citing sources. You did not study Hurricane Mitch, so that's totally fine. Don't need to apologize for that, but you do want to make sure we're tracking down our sources. Cool. Okay. Um, 
some initial thoughts on that bad boy. Um, let's see the next one. Wildfires. Okay. Okay. Initial thoughts about this one. A lot of visuals. Okay. Right. Good. Uh -huh. And so you, you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Okay. Okay. Other folks? Nobody else. Everybody's asleep. Can I do what? Oh, I will in a sec. But this is this. We're just like this first one. Yeah, I'll zoom in a sec. But just like, what do you think about the overall layout? This thing I'm asking about right now. Okay, so one thing um, that uh, I think this one could probably use a bit more text, right? So our last couple were like, oh, it seems a little bit heavy. This one maybe could use a little bit more. Again, we have, uh, it seems like a lot of negative space here, right? A lot of negative space. Um, and again, negative space isn't bad. You don't have to fill up every single square inch, but it seems like we could probably bring in a few more, um, you know, a few more details and stuff, I suspect, right? We also have this inconsistent. So we have uh, this table seems really like blah, blah is a technical term, right? So, so there's, there's probably good stuff in here, but it's like, there's all this negative part up here, all this empty part up here, right? Everything is like squished right up against the line on the bottom. So I would say probably make that table a bit smaller. Or if for some reason you were really wedded to the size of that table, I would make the tech, the, 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 the stuff inside bigger, right? Um, and, then, and then just the alignment stuff, right? So here's this visual edge, which looks like it may be different from this visual left side edge. It's certainly different from this one, which is different from this one. And so all those, all those unevenness things in there will tend to draw our eyes. Um, and so, so I would, I would, you know, work on that basically. Um, any other, any other general comments? Okay. Let's zoom in for a little bit on this guy. Okay. And so this seems, okay, this is a classic one right here. It's a classic one. So statement on one line. Statement on one line, two line, and then three. And that three is one word or one or two words, right? I almost always guarantee we could, we could get that, we could save a line there, right? So we could probably do that by say, uh, by doing a little rewriting. So how about, do you, why don't you guys see if you can take a stab at that to help me with this. So let's look at this bulleted point. Let's zoom in a little more so you guys can see it more easily. So intensity of the 2019 fire was unprecedented due to a significantly hot year, second hottest in recorded history. So ideas of how we could um, tighten up the wording here to not be on three lines. Sorry, space to, space to which one? Say, space. Oh, so you're saying like make second hottest rec on record a, a third bullet, you mean? Oh, so my goal, my question though is for these three lines, I want you to use it to say it in less, with less lines. So say it in one or two lines. Yes. So I would write the number two ND and have the ND superscript. And that, almost, I mean, there's other stuff we can do too, but that almost assuredly that second will just, We'll almost assuredly bring this history up to here and it'd fit on. So even that just that one simple thing, well, boom. And so, uh, so, I, so you, you could do that. That's 20. That's great. I think also we could move things around. 2019 fire intensity was unpredicted, right? We don't have to say of the, that gets rid of of the, um, we maybe even could cut out some of this other stuff. So, so 
you know, edit it, edit it, take a whack at it. What if we, what if, can we drop this word? Can we, we switch the order a little bit of it? That kind of thing. Other, and then again, uh, so this one's good. Australian Government Bureau of Media, Meteorology, as long as that is exactly what the reference is in the references, right? So let's see. So there's no year here, right? There's no year here. But then this also looks like it comes from the BBC. So where did this come from? So let's look at our references. Uh, BBC 2020. Okay. But then this is BBC 2020. So is this BBC 2020? Was this one also BBC 2020? Uh, right. So again, always reference stuff. So insert. Even if it says something on here, I would, if, if, it, if the source was BB, the British Broadcasting System in 2020, I would put, again, another thing there or on the side, BBC 2020. Cool? Should be very unambiguous. So one, we need to reference stuff. Two, it should be unambiguous uh, where it's from. We should be able to look on this and see, you know, and, then, and then know what I'm looking for in the references. I shouldn't have to do any work as the reader. Um, okay, cool. Uh, other comments, other, other suggestions? Okay, let's look at our next one. Oh, very exciting, tsunamis. Okay, what do you guys think about this one? Wait, first, everybody has to stand up, everybody stand up. We're way too low energy here. Every stand up, every stand up, do a little toe touch, do a little toe touch. Okay, now, now we have the energy going. Now we can give some cool feedback on these posters. Nice. Okay, cool. All right, so tell me about this. What's, what's uh, uh, again, first pass, gross visual layout. What do you guys think? Okay, right. So again, so the images seem a little bit, seem strangely, they seem a little bit out of whack compared to the paragraphs, right? So the paragraphs are wide. The pictures are always narrow. Okay, what else? A lot of space, like bit like here space. Yeah, right. Okay, good. So same thing that that negative space, right? So so we want to work on making these posters engaging and 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 visually rock and roll. Um, any any other gross? Okay, so the spacing we talked about. Some of the elements, like the pictures, are different, uh, differently, uh, of a different width than the um, text. Anything else? Yeah, I don't know. Let's take a look. What's I don't know. The references look. Like, what's up with the references? Yeah. So, um, so they they just look again. So, uh, though that's probably a still a little teeny bit too small. I said you can make your references smaller, but that you know they don't want to be microscopic. But particularly when we have all of this space, right? We have inches and inches of space. So why, why would we make it super small, right? Um. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and let's, let's look at one of these text boxes, for example. Let's look at emergency phase initial recovery. The International Rescue Committee provided technical and financial support to the Association for Aid and Relief Japan. Japan, da da da, 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 da. Okay. The initial search and rescue lasted about a month and a half with an estimated blah, blah, blah people killed, the number of people harmed, numbers still missing. Uh, more than 120,000 buildings destroyed, uh, uh, a quarter of a million half destroyed, and three quarters of a million partially destroyed. Um, so uh, uh, generally speaking, that, that seems good. That seems like a, a good data density. It seems, seems uh, helpful. Um, I would maybe, it might be clear, uh, like partially destroyed means uh, you know, less than half destroyed, presumably on this, right? But that might be a little bit, maybe helpful to give a little bit of clarity about what that means in the in this particular Japanese context. Um, yeah, remember that we we use our by default we're using ecology format, right? That's our ESRM writing guide. So that's author year. That's not author comma year. It's author year. So if there's more than one author or it's at all or something, you do a comma. But if it's just 
just a person's name. In other words, you don't put a comma between the author and the year. Okay, cool. So you get one more and then I'll let you guys, turn you guys loose. Uh, I do reading control. And our hurricanes two. Okay, what about this one? Gross visual layout, what do you guys think? Okay, yeah, so, so there's again some like space that we could put some more stuff here, right? More facts, more tables, more images or something, okay. Anything else? We have this gap here where if we used it, the references would, would fit better. And this is a good example. See you guys how it's not, it's close, but it's not quite aligned, right? See how that, that visually looks like rank, it looks kind of, you know, janky. Um, so by making those guys aligned, it would, it would look a lot better. Okay, so one of the one I wanna mention that we haven't really talked about yet in terms of the visual layout, generally speaking, it works best to break up text. So uh, te you have to do every, it's not like you have to do it every single thing, but, but you want, you're kind of working towards something like text, visual, text, visual, text, visual, text, visual, te you know, stuff like that. Again, you don't have to every time, but the more you can break up large blocks of text, generally speaking, the more readable people tend to perceive that. That's not a, a specific formula, but that's just a goal. Um, and so, uh, particularly in a report like this, now, if, you're, if we were doing, um, like, say, your capstone research paper or whatever, right, you wouldn't, you wouldn't toss the, the, methods, the methods picture over here in the at sort of the end of the poster, right? The methods would be kind of over here. So in some cases, there's, there's some sort of natural locations where the graphics or the images or whatever should go. But in this context, which is, which is more of a, you know, you guys are reporting on this event um, uh, and you have a bit more freedom of, of where to put the, the visuals, for example, like representative images of the disaster, right? That gives you a much freer hand and you can salt and pepper those. Um, uh, many of the, the graphics uh, wherever is convenient in the, in the poster. Okay. Uh, let's look at, let's look at one, let's, uh, which one do you guys want to look at? Primary, let's look at primary crisis on this poster. Oh, and also make sure that we're using consistent fonts throughout. So this looks like, this is our aerial, this is the aerial, aerial, but then this one is bolded. This one is some type of mm, times New Roman or something. And this one as well. This one has some extra spaces between the images and the of. Um, so um, consistent uh, uh, formats and stuff. Um, oh, here's another one. Okay, so here we go. Primary crisis, topic, bullet point. There's no such thing as a topic and then a topic and then bullet points. There's also no such thing as a sub, a sub example, a bullet point within something that's only a single bullet. So in the, in the, in the world of doing uh, shorthand and, and notes, right? This is, the, this is the primary crisis, this is the overarching thing, it's the overarching theme, the topic, right? Whatever, whatever we're talking about. And then if we laid it out like this, this implies this is a subtopic, right? Hurricane Maria, which could be fine, but there's no second subtopic, right? So you either don't need this or this should be merged in with this, right? Primary crisis, Hurricane Maria or Hurricane Maria's primary crisis if you, if you felt compelled to do that. You get what I'm saying? Similarly, another common one is somebody would say, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Mitch, Hurricane this, Hurricane that. So you'd have these, so that would be cool. Like, okay, got it, here are the, here are the broad topics. But then under one of them, maybe you only have a single bullet. That doesn't make sense. If you only have one bullet, again, that information could be in the overall uh, topic. So we use this, we use this bulleted approach 
to, to note taking or to information communicating in a hierarchical structure. So this thing, this Hurricane Maria is a subset of this, and these bullets are a subset of Hurricane Maria. Does that make sense? So always have to have at least, at least one bullet point, right? So otherwise it doesn't make sense to have bullet points, for example. Okay, um, let's just look real quick. Northeastern Caribbean, the dates. Okay, cool, 175. Uh, oh, okay, so sure, this is fine. You guys should always use metric. Uh, it's fine to, in parentheses, you put, uh, you know, so kilometers per hour. It's fine to put miles per hour in parentheses, but uh, always lead with the metric. Lead with the metric. And that goes for all of our, that goes for your whole career, right? So I get that if we're doing restoration, a lot of people talk about foot centers for the planting of the plants. I get that when we're talking about the wind speeds, a lot of people are more, most people are more comfortable hearing 175 miles per hour, but you as a technical professional should always lead with the metric and then you can put the, the imperial um, in parentheses to, to help folks, but, but yeah in your technical reporting careers. Uh, estimated death toll, 2975 to 465. Okay, all cool. No references for this though, right? So these look like uh, uh, pretty detailed numbers. So there's a, at least strong suspicion that these are, these are uh, you know, well-researched, but you wanna prove that to me by showing the reference for that. Um, I'd probably put, I'd probably put homes on a different line. I'm not sure why they're grouped with that. Um, uh, and you can also do sub bullet points too, right? You can do sub points. So ecological impacts um, varied or something. And then you can put, you know, widespread flooding, soil erosion, vegetation change or something like that. Um, and and, and there's, there's, generally speaking, we want stuff to be parallel. So check this out. 175 mile wind speed or max wind speed. Okay, that's cool, right? I would lead with uh, 2,975 to, so for leading with a quantity, I would lead with a quantity, right? I would lead with a quantity, $90 billion in damage, right? So make these, make these guys as parallel as possible. And then when you're looking between sections, make those as parallel as possible. Right, that'll look way tighter, it'll look way better. And then also wanna put the references for that. So who said that it was, usually the people that estimate the dollar damage are a different group of people that estimate the number of humans killed, for example. So probably there's a different source for those two. So let's make sure we de we're detailing those. Okay, is that making sense, you guys? All right, so let me show you one last thing and then I'll turn you loose. So let's, uh, Let's uh, let's open uh, just one of these, some random one. What happened? Uh, let's open. Uh, okay. Okay, so what I was talking about before when you guys were, were, were aligning things, right? Just real quickly. Um, so if I, I select this uh, box, here, let me, let me get these guys a little more, more obvious. Okay, so let's say they were, they were tweaky like this, right? There, there was something, something like this, right? And we wanted to align them. I can s click that object, hold the shift key down. So if I click that one, if I click the other, Thing, it's just going to jump to the other thing, jump to jump. So I'm going to click one of those, hold my shift key down while I click the next one and while I click the next one. Okay. Uh, and then um, I'm going to come up here and it's going to depend on what, if you're on PC or Mac, but you'll, you'll have this uh, somewhere in there. So I'm going to come up to, in my case, format. There's also, this will also show up on your ribbon, uh, depending how you have your, your PowerPoint configured. And I'll come up here and I'll go to alignment. 
and then I'll pick uh, a line left. Oh, wait. What the hell happened right there? Uh, format. Format object. That's what I wanted. Sorry. So, so that I, I, just, I just formatted the text inside. Sorry. So format object. So come over here. And then I go to... Uh, this bad boy. Um, so right here, when I click in here, I can see the exact size of, well, sorry. Okay, when I click on one, one object, uh, I can, that's okay, so sorry, let me start over. Click on this bad boy. Um, I come up here. And uh, and this dude's really big, let's say, right? Let's say this guy is really big. And I wanted him to be, I want to be at this about the same size. Um, I can I can come up here and I can start to drag. And when I get lined up, with one other box that you see, I see that red. Can you see that? So right now you see nothing and then watch. See, oop, so that now that's lined up with this, the left side of this one. And if I keep dragging it in, it's gonna line up with this one here. So you can visually do that really quickly, right? And that's one way to do it. But if I wanna make sure after I've done a couple messing around with things, right? Maybe, did I do it right? I'm not sure. So I can select whatever that object is, come up, hit format, object and this works for everything this works for a picture or text or whatever and i go yo and i click this this dude right here the measurement one and it's going to tell me okay my width is 14.38 inches okay cool and then i'm going to go check this one now i'm going to click this guy this one's 14.9 inches right so if i wanted everything to be 14.38 i can just come into this dude and say that, and then it resizes. So the box is, is or, or the, the items are the same width, right? Or height or what, however I wanna do it. Okay, so then I wanna make sure that they're aligned the, the, the right way. And so uh, I'm gonna grab these guys again, uh, click a thing, hold the shift key down, click a thing, hold the shift key down, click a thing. And uh, we're off to the races. And I want to do I want to do where is my this is gonna be the text. Where is my Okay, so it's under it's under a range. Sorry. So the so this one was for the text. This one I'm come down to a range, hit align. And I'm gonna go align left, and then everything will boom, go snap to that that side. I could also do if I wanted stuff to be um, in the middle, I could come up here and I could align them by the center, for example, and then they'll all be evenly, um, you, you know, a, a perfectly aligned and balanced to the right and left. Cool. Other questions you guys are wondering about in terms of how to do something in, in PowerPoint before I turn you guys loose? Oh, sorry, there was one more thing. So this thing I wanted to show you guys. So if these are bullets, right? And this guy was like this. Right, and this one. Is also like that, right? So remember I, I mentioned that it, it looks a lot better to have a visual break. Right now, there's no visual break between a bullet and a non-bullet, right? So I, if I come up here and I select, I just select the whole thing. So I'm gonna select the, this whole deal. And I come up here to format. I'm gonna pick format paragraph. I'm gonna pick paragraph and then let's have a look. So keep looking at here when I'm doing this. So right now it says before text is blank. Um, the line spacing is single spacing. Now I could do this. I could say one and a half spaces and say, okay. But that's just gonna space everything out that same amount. That's not what I want, 
That's not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. So check this out. I highlight whatever stuff I want to, and I say format paragraph, and then uh, after spacing after, I'm going to just start doing a, a few ticks and see what it looks like. Six. Okay, see how it's spaced a little bit. Now it's getting a little easier. So the, these, this text is is still um, as it was before. This text is the same as it was before, but the, the spacing between these has changed. And so we can make it even more dramatic if I come up here and if I do um, 12 point, for example. Now it's starting to get a much, much easier to see this is set off from this, et cetera. And you can play with doing the before or the after or whatever, but those are some very simple tricks to make it look a lot more readable and a lot more professional. Cool. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys loose. Uh, why don't we take a quick five minute break and then uh, uh, you guys can come back and start on this stuff. <laughs> 